All right, uh, first just state your name and, and position real quick for me, please. Okay, my name is Sefton Hill, and I'm game director at Box Fitness Studios. All right, Sefton, what's it like to finally be bringing this out to the fans and giving it to them and saying, now, go, play? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's kind of scary. I mean, it's great because the reviews have come out, you know, so many positive reviews, and um, it does feel like you're giving away your baby, you know, like putting it out there for everyone to see, but, um, you know, the feedback's been so positive, it's always a kind of scary moment, but I think that everyone uh, who's played it has loved it, so, you know, it's, it's exciting, kind of a bit scary, because the fans are the people who really tell you what they think of it. Okay? Now, Batman Arkham Asylum already was the best-reviewed superhero game ever. It was something that had all these new features and all these fans that were so excited about it. Uh, it would have been very easy for you guys to just kind of rest on your laurels and just put something out very similar, a couple new characters, and be done with it. Uh, why was it important for you to not do that? <laughs> I think because we felt like um, we wanted to keep that same energy that we had when we were making the first game. You know, we wanted to sort of challenge ourselves because we felt that that was what made the first game successful. It was successful because we wanted to try new stuff, because we were trying to explore these different aspects of it, what being Batman truly means. So, you know, we thought if we weren't pushing ourselves that we would kind of essentially be going backwards a little bit. So we really wanted to take on something which kind of scared us a bit, you know, and also thought, well, what's the big thing? You know, what do we want to do? What's the natural next step for us? We really wanted to take Batman into Gotham. So, you know, there were definitely a few times when we were making the game where we were kind of wondering, like, is this even technically possible, what we want to do? But, um, yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it was all really worth it, you know? Well, so you're wondering that, and then at the same time, you put in Catwoman, including into the story, yeah. and then you put in Nightwing and Robin yeah. in as characters for challenge maps. Uh, why is that kind of expansion uh, something that's important? I think it's just um, we have, everyone on the team has this kind of hunger to make the best game we possibly can make, you know? So when we come up with a good idea, we really want to get it in the game, and it's that hunger that drives us forward. And um, I think maybe it does drive the production team a little bit crazy because it's like, you know, come up with another good idea and they're like, oh God, <laughs> you guys are making our life a misery. But, um, you know, they do a phenomenal job in kind of balancing the workload of everyone. Right. And we kind of believe that a good game is designed over two years. It's not designed in one week at the start of the project. You know, you start with your core idea, but then you keep trying to think of ways to improve it. You know, like every morning I wake up thinking, well, how can I make this better? And that we're constantly re-evaluating the game and trying to improve it and trying to improve it and trying to improve it all the way through development to the end. Now something that's really important about Batman is the other stuff all around him. The the look, the feel, the sound. Yeah. Um, with having a full-size city now instead of just this contained environment, were, were there any big challenges that came out of that? I mean, there, the was, there were massive technical challenges in terms of just bringing in that amount of data like constantly streaming in that amount of data because what we wanted to do was to keep that same attention to detail and love of the asylum but just write that on a much bigger canvas so you know constantly streaming in information yeah it was, like, it was a massive technical challenge for us and um, you know I mean I think it was definitely worth it because there's no other way we wanted to give you the freedom to go anywhere you could go anywhere you wanted to go so it's not like that's what it has to be to be a Batman game so there was never any real question of well look can we just stop him going into this area? Because it's like, well, then it's not Batman. You know, what stops Batman? You can't stop Batman. So, you know, we kind of felt like the only way it was going to be successful is to solve those technical issues. So, that, like I say, the engine guys, uh, design guys, the art guys did a phenomenal job making this work, you know, and I think those guys, all credit to them. They did an awesome job. All right, wrapping up, Sefton. People love Batman. People love Batman's villains. <laughs> sure. Uh, of some of the new guys that you guys brought in, and who was somebody that kind of surprised you maybe? Maybe you were a little off about that particular villain, but they surprised you and, and got you excited in the game. Well, I think Penguin is a good example of someone who we kind of turned in. Because we wanted... Did you voice him? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Based on me. Yeah, it's not so like we wanted someone who was like a kind of... We're trying to think how would Penguin exist in this world, because it's quite dark and gritty and horrible and... You know, Penguin sometimes portrayed sort of with a sort of slightly comedic edge, or we wanted him to be like just really nasty, horrible piece of work, you know. So we kind of gave him the 
the East End London voice, and we, you know, gave him the smashed beer bottle monocle, and right. just, I think it was. I think yeah, that was, that really was a nice. particularly twisted. Yeah, yeah, and that's like a backstory behind that that you can find out. Um, so that was really cool, and I think Freeze as well was someone we enjoyed because I think with Freeze we really like this idea that is he a villain or is he, you know, is he a hero? Well, not a hero, but is he but is he really against yeah. Batman? Right. We never really saw it like that. We always felt like the kind of animated series version of Freeze is this right. character who's just obsessed by saving his wife. Right. And if anything gets in his way, he's getting the out of his way, but he's not sort of inherently a bad guy, and we felt that that was a really interesting angle for, free, for Freeze, because like Batman's all about his relationship with these different characters, so I think Freeze, Penguin, but we had so much fun, Riddler, I love working with Riddler, because it was just great to come up with all the different challenges to sort of try and outsmart right. Batman, outsmart the player, was, um, was something I really enjoyed as well, so yeah, it'd be hard, really hard to pick a favourite, <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was really so, good fun. So all of the villains, is what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. What's the very first thing a fan should do when they uh, they get this home and get this out of the box? I mean, I think the thing I love doing is gliding around, just being Batman, gliding through the streets, okay. seeing a group of thugs, dropping in and just kicking their ass, you know? Like, that feeling of being Gotham City's protector and saviour is just, you know, something I think you can... And as you explore, you'll find loads of cool stuff hidden around the world. So, very you know, cool. part of the main story, but explore, you know? Do both. Be Batman. All right, thank you very much, Sefton. Thanks very much.